our July edition to Salesian Snippets. I'm your host, Sister Monica Wheeler, and we are so excited to join you for our last episode of Salesian Snippets before our big celebration. So as you know, we've been joining you every month on the 5th because our very first sisters, St. Mary Mazzarello and her fellow sisters professed August 5th, 1872. And those of you who are really quick with math can tell that was 150 years ago, one month from today. So we are so pleased to have you. Every month we have been joined by a different member of the Salesian family. And what a beautiful way to finish off this year-long expedition through the Salesian family, um, but to have Sister Roseanne Ruiz join us. Uh, many of you probably know Sister Roseanne, but um, we are so excited to have you, Sister Roseanne. Um, Sister Roseanne is probably known by many of you in her uh, time serving in St. John Bosco School in San Antonio. She was in Louisiana, in New York, New Jersey, in San Francisco. She's been all over the place, but her current role is as the provincial of the Mary Immaculate Province in the West. So Sister Roseanne, thank you so much for coming out to join, join us today. It's a joy. Thanks for it the is, invitation, yes. Absolutely, I cannot think of anybody I would rather have to kind of finish this off um, this experience. So, um, so as our listeners may know, and as you know, we always begin this um, this show, the Salesian Snippet Show, um, with a prayer to Saint Mary Mazzarello, asking her to journey with us and to help us to become um, to become examples of sanctity as she was. So, we're going to go ahead and begin with a prayer together. There we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, source of all that is good, you give us in St. Maria Dominica Mazzarello a shining example of Christian and religious life. Through her deep humility and ardent charity, grant that we, in simplicity of spirit, may bear daily witness to your fatherly love. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. Mary, hope of Christians, Pray for us. Saint Mary Mazzarello, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we know our listeners, they've been learning some trivia of our charism, and we have our trivia question for today. So again, with this trivia question, if you think you know the answer, please put it in the Facebook messaging, um, and we'll see if at the end of the show if you got it right. So our question today is, Don Bosco described the Institute of the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians as a living monument of what to Our Lady? So take a look at that question. We're filling in the blank. A living monu monument of something to Our Lady. So we invite you to put your answers in that comment box, and we will check out the answer at the end. And Sister Roseanne, while they do that, I wonder if you would play a little game with me. So on Salesian Snippets, we have a game we call from the mundane to the mystical. So I'm going to give you two questions and you just give me the first answers that come to mind. Are you ready? All set. Okay, so in these really hot summer months, at least here in San Antonio, um, do you have a favorite cooling down activity that you is just particularly near and dear to your heart? Oh, particularly near and dear to my heart in the summertime. If I don't get to the beach, I think I will die. <laughs> so um, that's, that's my most favorite, most favorite cooling down activity. Anything beach, the sand, um, listening to the waves, getting in the waves. Um, habit and all, right? That's my favorite. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the habit, the habit is not a deterrent. Trust me. No way. <laughs> And you're a California girl too, right? So yes. that's yes. part of your experience growing up. That's awesome. So that's the mundane. And now the mystical, um, we are one month away from celebrating 150 years as the Institute of da the Daughters of Mary Humble Christians. So as a daughter of Mary Humble Christians, what is your favorite thing about this life, this call? Okay, the, for me, it's being a daughter. Um, for as early as I can remember, 
And my most favorite thing was being the daughter of Joe and Genevieve, you know? And um, then becoming a daughter of Mary Help of Christians, becoming Mary's daughter too. I mean, I can sit for a long time and think of nothing else than that wonderful, wonderful reality of being her daughter, being Mary's daughter and what that means. And then being a sister. I'm the oldest, I'm the big sister in a family of, uh, we're six siblings. And I just love being a big sister. And uh, being a daughter of Mary, look at all the sisters I'm with. So, you know, family is such a, such a dear, dear part of my life. And it's just a continuation of family. You, I, I didn't think it could get better than my own family. And, and it certainly has. You it's know, like the, the, fa the family spirit, right? Yeah, I was just going to say that, the family spirit. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So Sister Rosanna, that, that could be a really good segue here um, because every month we talk about a different virtue that is particularly shown in the life of St. Mary Mazzarello. And the virtue for this month is gratitude. And we could already hear it in your voice, the gratitude for, for the gifts that you've been given. But I wonder if you could share with us just some personal experiences that you've had with the power of this virtue of gratitude and how it's been operative in your life. Well, it really is in our DNA. It's our identity, a, 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 a very important marker of who we are as daughters of Mary Help of Christians. And um, it goes all the way back to when I was a child. This is something that our parents really instilled in us. I can remember um, we, we have lots of aunts and uncles, cousins and all, and so lots of visiting. And uh, my mother, and father, you know, you did not go to your cousin's house empty handed. They, I, I, I can still hear them saying, who, who do we think we are? Do we go to somebody's house and say, okay, you lucky people, here we are. Absolutely not. We have to thank them for their hospitality. We have to thank them for giving us the time to visit with us. So we'd always have something, um, cookies or, you know, something. Sometimes it was a new game that we got that to share with our cousins or whatever. So it's something that was instilled in us. And of course, instilled in us from the very beginning um, when we uh, started our formation and becoming Daughters of Mary Help of Christians. And it's one of my most favorite um, identity markers to, to dwell on and to fall back on for um, many experiences for challenges that we have, for um, successes, joys. It's just so important. Do you, have a, do you have a particular moment in your life that you've really seen like the power of gratitude that you could share with us? Oh, yes. One that stands out for me was, um, I'm not gonna name the parish or the, <laughs> but we were in this um, community and um, as happens, just life, human condition, there were some misunderstandings that were making the go of ministry kind of tough on the sisters, the faculty, the staff, the pastor, kiddos, families. I, it was really disheartening. So as a community, we sat down and we said, what can we do? There didn't seem to be um, a remedy good enough to solve the problem or an explanation that would do or, and it was so sweet. Uh, one of the elder sisters in the community says, well, you know what? Why don't we really go all the way out for gratitude day? And we usually did gratitude day in May and uh, make it big, make it big and just drown everybody in gratitude. And, and maybe that'll help. So we did. I mean, we got the kids, we got the families involved, we got the teachers. Everybody was fever pitch excited when Gratitude Day came. We made sure it was on a day that the pastor could be there, his associate, um, certain key persons of the council who we, we needed to touch their heart, if you get my drift. And so we had, um, we had a stupendous Gratitude Day. The gifts were heartwarming, touching. Um, many of them were homemade by the kids. 
uh, families volunteered gifts, um, the numbers that the children did. You could just see everybody melting down the defenses and, and just, um, I don't know, you, you just felt affection taking over that um, the, the school, the faculty, the staff, the, the pastor, because the pastor particularly was, um, for whatever reason, um, and I have to tell you that gratitude day melted hearts. It warmed the chill and it, it was transformative. It was transformative. Ministry in that parish became different for the better. That is so beautiful. And I mean, it's like, it's so simple. <laughs> it's so simple. And yet you see like the incredible impact that it, that it has, you know, to, to just express that, to express the, the affection that, that you have for the people around you. And it can make such a difference. You know, when you were, when you were talking about that, I was thinking of um, the, you know, 150 years ago is coming up and um, Don Bosco, like, that gratitude was so important to them when um, when he he wasn't even actually going to be there for the profession of the sisters. It was like really a, a huge grace that he was able to be there for that moment. And um, and this I love this picture because he he was like he was really a father to the sisters Mary Mazzarello and the sisters who made their professions August 5th, 1872. But the bishop was there also. And Don Bosco asked the bishop, you know, to say a few words. And the bishop said, no, no, Don Bosco, like you speak, you speak to your sisters. And, um, and Don Bosco, he shared several thoughts with them. But one thought that just has always really touched me is that he said, you know, remember like with gratitude and with joy that you belong to Our Lady now. And that as members of this institute, you are, is that you belong totally to Our Lady and you are to be a living monument of Don Bosco's gratitude to Our Lady. And it says in the Cronostoria, which is the, like the history of, of our first sisters, that like the joy that they left that place with, it covered a multitude of deficiencies. They were so poor, they did not have, I mean, they didn't even have the support of the townspeople. There was so much, but just the joy in their hearts of like being that living monument um, carried them through. It carried them through all of those struggles. And looking back, you know, 150 years now, um, is there any part of that story that just particularly resonates with you as a member of the Institute of the Daughters of Mary Helpful Christians? I love that. I love that um, that episode. And, and, and to think of the first sisters that were with St. Mary Mozzarella when uh, they received their constitutions, when, when they made their profession. And there was one in particular that really strikes me. Um, well, they all do for different reasons, but right now, uh, a sister Rosalia Pestorino, the niece of Father Pestorino, who was the one who formed um, the women of Mornese into becoming the daughters of Mary. He didn't even want his niece to become a daughter of Mary Help of Christians because of the poverty and the privation of that community. So, you know, it's not like these sisters had everything going their way or that they had, uh, they were really, really, really poor and they, they suffered their poverty so much so that Don Pesterino tried to persuade Rosalia not to become. And what won Rosalie over to becoming a daughter of Mary Apple Christians, the sister's joy. And she says, you're right. The bread is hard and there's not even enough bread. <laughs> and uh, she said, but she wouldn't give up that life for all the finest bread in the world. And um, yeah, they were grateful for, for Mary who they tangibly felt her walking with them. Um, gratitude. Yeah. Each other for, um, I have to say that, that was the cause of their joy. And I know you, you mentioned to me before, I mean, you've mentioned it to me for years, but like that power of, of gratitude that can overcome so much of what we experience in life. Because sometimes it doesn't, you don't feel like being grateful, right? It's like, you're not feeling it. You know, you have these other emotions, these other feelings that you're dealing with. Um, and gratitude might not be the first one that comes to mind often, but, um, 
but I mean, but that doesn't mean that it's not so important. Like that you see that in our first sisters. Mm -hmm. and, and it's something that you have to teach children. It's not something that's natural, you know, it's, it's, it needs to be learned and it needs to become a habit because the last thing you think of when you're hurting or when you're suffering or when you're angry or when you're afraid is uh, gratitude. You know, you really have to, you have to search for, but I have to say that um, when you do find that element for which to be grateful, you can tame your fear, your anger, your, um, and, and, and also, you know, success. I mean, the last thing we think of when we're enjoying tremendous success is gratitude. I mean, I'm where I'm, I am, or I accomplished what I accomplished, not through my own merit. But through the work, the work, the hands, the support of so many others, beginning with God's grace. So gratitude can keep me humble <laughs> and keep me from becoming uh, uh, arrogant, uh, entitled monster. <laughs> and on you the know? other side, from being depressed. It's like, exactly. <laughs> it's because if things aren't going well, there's always something to find. Gratitude is an antidote for a lot, a lot of stuff that we experience so we're speaking about this incredible power of gratitude and one thing that we usually ask our guests to do is just at the end to give the listeners like a challenge like how can we live this virtue in our day-to-day -day lives how how would you recommend really living this virtue of gratitude in today's world how to live the virtue of gratitude well For the first thing, there's so many things we think about when we first get up in the morning, when we first wake up, all the stuff we have to do. Maybe the first thought is you don't want to get up. <laughs> I don't know. But the very, very, to, to discipline oneself with the very first thought in the morning to be grateful, to be grateful for God for giving you the gift of life. Being grateful to God for giving you the gift of love, you see, and for the persons who are in your life. And then the list just keeps growing and growing and growing. Um, so I, I would challenge us, let that be the first thought. And it'll be easier for the next thought to be gratitude or for when the time comes where you need that power that comes from gratitude that you'll be able to lift your mind up for what, need, for what we need to be grateful for. When, when I'm angry, when I'm um, fearful, when I'm, I, I just can't begin to tell you. Um, can I share a little episode that, that I'll never forget? Um, I, I, I was privileged to be um, teaching side by side a wonderful teacher, Mrs. Durr, some of you may know her. And I have to tell you that she really ingrained praise and gratitude in my life. And it gave me so much joy to see her teach the little ones. And she taught the five-year-olds, the four-year-olds. And there was this little fellow and he was not in the playground at the time when he should have been. He was playing on the play structure when the big kids were there. And that's a no-no because they can get hurt when that happens. And sure enough, he got hurt. He skinned his knee pretty bad, pretty, pretty, pretty bad. And he was screaming. And Mrs. Durr went up to him and she said, now, Johnny. And he looked up at her and says, no, I'm not going to praise God for this. He knew without Mrs. Durr even saying, he <laughs> knew she was going to ask him to give God praise and to give God thanks. And she still didn't say anything. And he said, give God praise. Give God thanks for this. And so Mrs. Durr said, Johnny, if you didn't have legs and not all children have legs, would you have a need to skin? Why don't we give God praise and thanks for giving you legs? And it was like she got the faucet of running water and turned it off. The little guy stopped crying. He took Mrs. Durr by the hand and he started giving God praise and giving God thanks for his legs, for the playground, for the, by the time he got to the nurse's room, the nurse couldn't believe that this kid was so calm. 
And uh, long story short, we had to call the parents up. They had to bring him to urgent care because wow. he needed special wound care because that, that was a pretty bad skin knee. So but if it works for five-year-olds. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, in everything. I remember when I lost my credit card and I was in a panic and Mrs. Durr said, stop, 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 Sister Roseanne. I says, I'm not giving God thanks for that. What should I, <laughs> you know, and she talked me down from the panic. And uh, sure enough, it wasn't long. I retraced my steps, found it. But I, <laughs> I, I give the credit uh, for really, really learning this lesson well from Mrs. Durr. We were 13 years together. And I have to say, um, every other thought, action was give God praise and give him, and, and give him thanks. And what a beautiful example that can be to each one of us. So Sister Roseanne, thank you you so much for um, joining us for capping off this season of um, Salesian Snippets. It was a true joy to get to visit with you and to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for your um, uh, service of leadership for our province. Um, usually at this time, we would announce um, our next episode, the fifth of the next month, but this month is a little different because on the fifth of next month, we are going to be Saw that there. Share my screen. We are going to be gathering for the celebration of the 150th um, celebration of our community. So we would like to invite you instead on August 6th, Saturday, August 6th, we are actually going to be doing this in person. So we have our Salesian Family Fun Fest taking place at St. John Bosco School, um, which includes um, mass, food trucks, games, entertainment, all kinds of fun times for the whole family. Everybody is invited. So we really hope we see everyone there, old friends, new friends, to help us celebrate the 150th anniversary of the foundation of the Daughters of Mary Helpful Christians. And in case you were wondering about that question at the beginning about living monument of what to Our Lady, the answer is, you guessed it, gratitude, our theme for this time. The sisters are called to be a living monument of gratitude to Our Lady. So thank you all so much for joining us over these past it's 11 months now that we've been together and we hope that you continue to follow us on Facebook and all the different areas to learn how we continue to celebrate our 150th anniversary. So thanks again, Sister Roseanne. Thanks to all Thank of our you. viewers Thank and um, we look forward to seeing you in person August 6th. God bless.